fast acting first responders stop this raging shed fire from spreading. This was a scene in North Amityville yesterday evening as firefighters battled the fire on Jefferson Street. The heat from the fire damaged some of the home siding, but no injuries were reported. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Now to conflict of interest concerns in Suffolk. A top county official initiated a $75,000 contract for a nonprofit that later named her its chief executive. Sherry Einhorn has a story you'll see only in Newsday. This contract between Suffolk County and the nonprofit Health and Welfare Council of Long Island is now under review by the county executive's office and the county attorney after officials say they saw some potential red flags. According to the $75,000 contract obtained by Newsday, $10,000 was earmarked for a new incoming CEO who hadn't been named yet. Former Deputy County Executive Vanessa Baird Streeter is the one who initiated the contract. In January, she was named the new CEO and started a few weeks ago. When you look at the county ethics code, there are strict prohibitions for public employees negotiating to their benefit with the private sector upon separation. For her part, Baird Streeter says she was in talks about the need for the contract with the council over the summer after the Department of Social Services said it was having difficulty processing SNAP benefit applications. That was months before the Health and Welfare Council's position became available after the former CEO stepped down to become a county legislator. There's nothing unethical that took place here. There's no impropriety and there's no legal issues that are associated with it. The core mission of what I wanted to do was to make sure that we were serving our most vulnerable residents and help the Department of Social Services. Newsday investigative reporter Sandra Petty is part of a team taking a closer look at how contracts were awarded. Under the statute, any contract over $25,000 is subject to competitive bidding unless it meets a couple of exceptions. This contract did not meet those exceptions. A spokesman for County Exec Ed Romaine told us County Executive Romaine is fulfilling his promise of reviewing every county department and is working with his staff to determine how county dollars were spent under the Ballone administration. Those familiar with the process of awarding contracts say an overall review seems like a good idea. I mean, the, con the concern would be is that under the guise of a cybersecurity attack, which affected a half a million people, or a bunch of other contracts, not, not $75,000, but, you know, in hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars awarded with absolutely you know, minimal or no competitive uh, you know, review or uh, bidding process. I'm Shari Einhorn for Newsday TV. Read more on this story on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Happening tonight, Tom Swazi is headed back to Congress. The Long Island Democrat will be sworn into the House of Representatives this evening, tightening the narrow Republican holds in the House. Swazi, a former three-term congressman, is taking over George Santos's vacant seat in the 3rd Congressional District. First to Newsday, a waste incinerating company repeatedly violated state environmental law by dumping ash at the Brookhaven landfill. That's according to the DEC. Investigative reporter Paul LaRocco explains. The State um, Department of Environmental Conservation uh, found that uh, Covanta um, on numerous occasions uh, violated uh, in, you know, state environmental law in the way that they uh, mixed and um, handled the, the ash they delivered to the Brookhaven landfill you know, a number of years ago. Um, the policies have since changed, and uh, Covanta and the state uh, assert that this is not happening anymore, but this addresses past practices, and um, you know, Covanta could be on the hook for, uh, you know, for a penalty. So what happens next and what does this mean for the communities? The state is going to negotiate a potential settlement with Covanta to uh, to address these violations they've alleged. Um, the community is obviously has been concerned about this issue for quite a while, and this is going to pique their interest even more and perhaps lead to speculation that, um, you know, there could be liability down the line, you know, if, if contamination is ever determined uh, to have been, um, you know, caused uh, as a result of um, ash dumped at the landfill. But, but we don't have clarity on that right now. 
Paula Rocco in studio for us. Thank you. Read more about this story on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. First at Newsday, significant problems at North Hempstead's building department. The county comptroller found the department had a flawed online permitting system. It also uncovered communication gaps with residents that exacerbated a backlog of permit applications. We now know the cost of a cyber attack on Long Island's largest publicly, publicly traded company, a hack shutdown Henry Shine's website for about a month last year. The CEO says it forced the sales staff to pivot from processing new orders to smoothing things over with existing customers. The Melville-based dental and medical supplier estimates the incident cost the company as much as $400 million in sales. As Black History Month draws to a close, an honor for a community center with a lasting impact. It's a story you'll see only in Newsday. St. Michael's Recreation Center in Gordon Heights is now officially a Brookhaven town landmark. The 75-year-old center started as a church for West Indian immigrants and later hosted after-school programs and at one point was even a bank. It's now a symbol of resilience for the predominantly black hamlet. Thousands of children have come through here over the years and those children have grown up and are many times still in this community. Uh, they are teachers, lawyers, doctors, um, police officers. Residents say they hope the designation will lead to more programming, including expanded computer classes. Dancing and playing music is helping some local students learn hip hop's history. Virginia Huey has a story you'll see only in Newsday. It's a Black History Month lesson taking students at Freeport's Leo F. Giblin School out of the classroom and onto a stage. The Giblin Hot Steppers showcased everything they learned about the 50-year history of hip-hop music by dancing to the beats, rhymes, and rhythms that shaped generations. I wanted them to realize the impact of Black culture on the world, basically. The fourth grade students learn how the genre evolved over the decades in the way the music was made and turned some local musicians into hip hop legends. Back then it was two turntables, constant breakbeat, boom, boom, boom. And then the rapping was a little slower, but now we have producers who are behind tables and just putting in sound. It teaches us like step by step of, or like exactly, kind of like exactly how the evolution is and it also lets us express ourselves. The children practiced daily for a month to prepare for the performance. The experience not only taught them about the history of hip hop, but they gained an important life skill. Most importantly, teamwork was a big, big, big thing that we had. We've got kids that come from all different descents, all different areas, backgrounds. Um, so they came together as a team and they're, they're one. So how do you think you did? I think I did very good. I mean, we crushed it. None of us made a mistake, and I think we did good. A great performance worthy of an encore. In Freeport, I'm Virginia Huey for Newsday TV. Great job. Read more about this story and more about our Black History Month special coverage on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Headed outside today, we're watching some wet weather and gusty winds with some weather whiplash on the way. Here's a look at your day planner, rainy and windy highs in the 50s. Tonight we're looking at a 20 degree difference with most of us feeling lows in the 30s tonight. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, highs in the 30s. And here's a look at your future cast. Rain throughout the day, but it should clear up around midnight. Looking at your seven day forecast, you can see the sun will come out tomorrow, but it won't last forever uh, as more rain, of course, is on the way.
Long Island weather is brought to you by Home Tax Saver, PTRC Incorporated. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Everyone have a wonderful Wednesday. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you later.